everybody and welcome to Calvary. I am so glad that you are here. My name is Angie Larson and I serve as the executive minister here at Calvary. At Calvary, our mission is to lead all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus Christ. And during this time, we are so lucky to have some unique ways to be able to offer the good news of Jesus out into the world through our virtual worship platform. So if you're someone who is watching this on Facebook, would you do me a favor? Would you go ahead and like Calvary's Facebook page and then share it on, share this worship service on your personal page? If you're somebody who's watching on YouTube, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're somebody who's listening on the radio or watching on cable access, would you do me a favor and would you give someone a call this week and invite them back next week to be able to listen or to watch alongside of you. If you'd like, there are some great discussion questions that you can continue to work with, those people that you invite that are on our website at www.calvaryalex.org. That is also the place where if you're new to Calvary, you can sign up to receive our emails. So if you go to the website, you'll just click on the button that says, I wanna sign up for emails, and then you'll be able to hear all of the exciting things that Calvary is doing during this time. I know that you don't wanna miss it, and I'm excited to be able to give you the updates. And I'm also excited to share with you about this online course that we are offering starting this Tuesday at 515. And it's an online course. So wherever you are at in the country or the world, you can join us for this. We are calling it Starting Point. For me, my faith started when I was a child. I grew up with parents who were committed Christians who made sure that I attended church every single week. But I know that that's not true for many people that I'm friends with. Some of my friends, they went like Christmas and Easter and maybe they did confirmation or a couple of Sunday schools, but it never really stuck or took. And so they are kind of restarting their faith. And then some of my other friends, they just weren't in a family that did anything churchy kind of at all. And so this talking about God and this talking about Jesus, this is brand new to them. So they're starting there. So if this is something that describes you, Starting Point is a class that is designed for you. It is a class that I am going to hopefully, we're going to have a great discussion to be able to sit there and talk about God. What does it mean to believe in God? What do we mean that Jesus is God? It's okay if you have your doubts or your wrestlings or all those things that are kind of, you know, makes it hard to experience a God that we can't see. So this is a safe space for you to bring all your questions without pressure. We're just going to explore kind of what it means to believe in God. Uh, it's Tuesdays at 515 and you can sign up on our website www.calvaryalex.org. I would love to have you in the class. So today, Sunday, something in incredibly exciting is happening. We are going to be passing out mini donuts. That's right, delicious little mini donuts, bags and bags of them, over at Luther Crest Bible Camp from 10 o'clock to 1130. So you can drive through or you can boat up and receive some of these donuts. So the Luther Crest staff is going to safely be able to give them to you, but your Calvary staff, we are going to be safely social distance and we are excited to see your faces and wave at you during this time. We are really looking forward to it. So come on out to Luther Crest today between 10 and 1130 and pick up your free donuts. Those are for you. So this week we are launching a new series that we are calling In the Meantime. And this whole month we're going to be asking the question, what do you do when you don't know what to do? I mean, I know that I have wondered this myself so many times in my life, times where I have felt a little lost or times when I wasn't sure exactly what was looking, what the future was looking like. I wasn't sure what was on the path ahead of me. And I know our Calvary High School seniors and their families, they experienced that this weekend with graduation. It looked different than what we expected. So today I want to remind you that through all the things, our God is great. Whatever the path leads, whenever we don't know where the path leads, our God is great wherever we are sitting in the meantime. Seniors, God is with you. So welcome to worship, everyone, and please sing as loud as you can and join us in song. We are so glad that you are here. Oh, Lord, my God.
sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there Savior, Lord, I'm thy name. 
Good morning, folks. Happy Sunday. Hey, Pastor Hans here, and it is so great to be with you this morning. Uh, obviously, I'm not at the church. We are out here at Luther Crest today, and uh, if you've been around Calvary for a while, you know that we should be gathered out here, as we do most summer Sunday mornings, we should be gathering out here for worship and so we thought, let's film from out at Luther Crest today. Remind us of the beautiful place that God has given us. And one day we'll be back here together again. So a couple of things before I begin today. Uh, today, uh, we love Luther Crest, the Bible camp here. And so today after worship, beginning at about 10 o'clock, drive on out, boat on out to Luther Crest, and you can receive uh, a little boat filled with Luther Crest's incredible mini donuts. We all love those mini donuts. We want to get your family jacked up on sugar. So come on out here, stay in your car, stay in your boat. We'll bring them to you. We'd love to see you right after worship today. Uh, the second thing is a little more serious. Uh, all of you have watched on the news the events that have unfolded in Minneapolis over the last week. And you and I both know that a conversation needs to be had in our community about race. And so each night this week during the Daily Dose at 615 on Facebook and on channel, cable access channel 181, we're going to ask you to tune in, tune in with a neighbor, tune in with your spouse, tune in with your family, because we're going to have a conversation each and every evening about race and faith. All right, I hope you can join us for that. Well, today we're launching a new worship series, which is called In the Meantime, uh, because here's what I know. We are all doing a bit of waiting these days, and there are all kinds of moments in our lives where we do a whole lot of waiting. And to this week, as I was getting ready for today, I, I sat my boys down and I said, boys, I need your help. Would you tell me uh, about a couple of times where you have had to wait, where you've had to wait for something? And they scratched their head and they wondered for a bit. And that's when one of my boys, they said, well, we had to do it today. Mom made up some 
chocolate chip cookie dough and she put it on the pan and she put it in the oven and the house started to smell, smell so good. And it, we had to wait until she took them out of the oven and they cooled before we could have one. And that's when my other boy said, oh, it's kind of like Christmas. At Christmas, you and mom, you put all these presents under the tree. It seems like months before Christmas Eve. And we have to wait, we have to wait. It seems like years from the time you put those presents under the tree until we get to open them up. And then one of my boys said this, he said, ah, oh, I feel like we've been waiting forever for school to be done. We've been waiting forever for this week. Uh, but then I sat my boys down and I, I asked them one more question. They got a kind of a puzzled look on their face when I asked them. I asked them, what do you do when you have to wait? What do you do when you wait? For example, I said, what about those chocolate chip cookies? What do you do when you have to wait for the cookies? And that's what one of my boys said, we drool. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, what about when you have to wait for Christmas to open those presents? And that's when one of them said to me, Dad, we have to admit something. When you're not around, we grab those presents and we shake them. We try and peek under the edges of the wrapping paper. It's hard, they said. And then I said, well, what about, what about waiting for school to be done? What's that look like for you? And that's what one of my boys said. Well, while we're waiting, we suffer. Huh? You see, what my boys were we're saying is that when we have to wait, in the meantime, it's really hard. It's really hard. And you and I, we adults, we know that's true. If you've had the privilege of being married, you know, guys, what it's like to buy a ring and then have to wait until that day when you get down on a knee and you propose to your spouse. There's all that rehearsing, all the sweaty palms, all the awkwardness of that time. It's hard to wait. Oh, or we, if you have children, you know what it's like to find out you're pregnant and then have those nine months of waiting. And then comes the day when you race to the hospital and that eventual moment when, when the doctor places that child into your hand, that time from when you find out you're pregnant till you, you, you receive that child, it seems like forever. It's hard and I don't have to carry a child in me, right? Uh, it's hard. Or to be a little more serious, it's hard to wait. Wait in that time between when you, you have that biopsy, you have that scan, and the time when the doctor calls with the results. It seems like forever, and waiting is hard. And it seems to me that, that in that time, in that period of waiting, the, those in the meantime moments, we ask questions like, when is this all going to be over? Well, folks, here's what I know. You and I, we find, every last one of us, find ourselves in one of those in the meantime moments. And I, I know many of us are trying to pretend a bit that, that this whole COVID thing is wrapping up and life is getting back to normal. But let's be honest, it's anything but normal. This week, my kids are going to finish up their school year at home. We got a whole class of kids that should have walked across the stage during a public ceremony of their graduation, and they didn't this weekend. There's going to be no softball leagues, no volleyball leagues, no baseball leagues this summer. This summer is going to look different. Just ask a restaurant owner if life has gotten back to normal. You see, here's the thing. The initial chaos has subsided and we're in this time between when the chaos started and when it's all gonna be over. It's this in the meantime moment. And here's what I know, when we find ourselves in those in the meantime moments, it does something to us. It has our insides churning because we've been trying to manage home life and managing kids who do school at home and while at the same time trying to manage work We've had to change our plans and then change our plans again and then change our plans again. We've learned a word called pivot. Seems to be all the rage right now. We've got to pivot our strategies to try and adjust to everything that's happening. I, mean, I think about our restaurant owners right now who are scrambling to try and figure out how they seat as many people as possible outdoors so they can continue to continue to serve our 
community. You see, here's what I know. We all find ourselves in this in the meantime moment, and it does something to us. It does something to our insides. For some of you, it's maybe made you mad. It just made you mad. Or, or others of you, you feel like you've been cheated. Still others of you find yourselves pointing fingers, trying to figure out who's to blame for this mess. We become flippant. If you're somebody who's been, been isolated in your home, the walls feel like they're closing in, and you are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired all alone in your home. And we're all wondering, when is it all going to end? Well, Jesus was with his disciples in the 21st chapter of Luke. And he's told those disciples there towards the end of his life that things are going to change. He says, one day the temple is going to be destroyed and your lives are going to be changed forever. Things are going to happen in your life that, that, will, that will mean you need to live your lives in a whole new way. And it's in that moment, it's in that moment that those disciples, being like us, not liking having to wait, they look at Jesus and they say these words. In Luke chapter 21, verse 4, they say, Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? In a sense, what they ask is the very same question you and I are asking. God, when is this all going to be over? When is the waiting going to be over? And what's interesting is in the verses that follow Jesus, Jesus doesn't answer their question. In fact, Jesus is incredibly vague in answering their question of when. When is this all going to happen? Instead, Jesus shifts the question to his own question. He answers not their question, but a question he thinks they need to wrestle with. Because here's what I think. I think Jesus knows that in our lives, there's going to be a whole lot of waiting. There are going to be a whole lot of these in the meantime moments when we don't have a clue when they are going to end. At the very heart of our Christian faith is an is a understanding that, that we exist in an in-the-meantime moment. We are in these in-between times, and Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that we were going to spend our entire lives in this in-between time, between when Jesus died and rose and when we will one day see, we'll see Christ again. The whole Christian journey, in a sense, is an in-the-meantime moment. And so Jesus, knowing this, knowing that our lives are going to be filled with these moments of waiting, Jesus doesn't answer their question when. Instead, he answers the question he believes they need to consider more than anything else. And that question is how. How? How do we be in these waiting times? How do we be community in the meantime? How do we care for one another? How do we remember who we are in the meantime? Because here's what Jesus knows. It's, it's in these in the meantime moments where, where we feel as though we're losing control. And if there's one thing we all love, it's control. It's almost like, it's almost like control is wired, hardwired into us. But it's in these in the meantime moments where we feel like we're stranded, where we, we feel like we're left all alone. It's in these moments where, where we lose control that something takes hold of us. Something ugly, something nasty, and that ugly something is called fear. And you and I know quite well, as we watch the news, as we watch social media, that fear, well, fear has raised its ugly head. And fear does a number of things to us. The first thing that, that fear does is fear, it, it drives us to forget who we are. Fear drives us to forget who we are. Here's what I know about myself. When I am feeling anxious and fearful, I become a version of me I don't want to be. And I know it's a version of me that my kids don't want me to be. My wife doesn't want me to be. Uh, our staff at church doesn't want me to be. I get nasty. I get ugly. I get cranky. I, I, I get flippant and cynical. And I'm guessing maybe you do too. You see, here's what fear does to us. 
Fear drives us to forget who we are. But that's not the only thing fear does. Fear convinces us that there are groups of people or individuals who are the problem. Let me say that again. Fear convinces us that there are groups of people or individuals that are the problem. And you know as well as I, as we look around, that's happening. Rather than this incredible thing called a pandemic, this once once in a lifetime experience we're having with this thing called COVID, rather than pointing to that as the problem, we, we've started to point to, to people like Governor Walz is the problem. It's those Democrats, they're the problem. Or, or rather than naming that, that COVID and this pandemic is the problem, we, we point at Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the problem. Those Republicans are the problem. You see, this is what fear does to us. It convinces us that there are groups of people or individuals that are the problem. As we've watched the events unfold in Minneapolis over the last week, here, here's my fear, is that we're going to do the very same thing with that issue. That we're going to look at what happened and we're going to say, well, well, that was George Floyd's fault. It's the fault of the African-American community. Or we're going to look at that police officer and we're going to say that it's his fault. It's, it's the cops. It's their fault. They are the problem. When here's what you and I know, the, the problem is so much bigger. The, the problem is that baked into our society here in America is a bias towards white people. There's a systemic racism that's, that's a part of our world. And that's what we need to address. You see, here's what fear does. Fear convinces us that there are groups of people or individuals that are the problem. The last thing that that fear does is fear does this. It demands that I put my comfort over the needs of the most vulnerable. It, It demands I put my needs or my comfort over the needs of the most vulnerable. And here's how that looks. We start to say things like, it's my right, rather than this is my community. We say things like, I deserve this, rather than my neighbor needs this. We start with me, rather than starting with, how do I love my neighbor as myself? You see, that's the third thing fear does. fear, Fear drives us. It demands that we put our comfort ahead of the needs, the needs of the most vulnerable around us. You see, here's what I think. I think Jesus knew that that answering the disciples' question when was not helpful because we're going to find ourselves in so many situations where, where the end of the waiting is uncertain. And what we really need help with is how. How do we be community? How do we be true to who we are in the midst midst of these times? And so Jesus, rather than answering the question when, he answers the question how. And in the 21st 21st chapter uh, of the book of Luke, he goes on and he says these words to his disciples. Be careful. Be careful of your hearts, uh, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of this life. And that day, that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. It's like Jesus knew that fear, fear could grab onto us and hold on like never before in the midst of these moments. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth Be always on watch. Watch yourselves. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. You see, I think Jesus knows that it's in these in the meantime moments that fear grabs a hold. It grabs a hold of us and it makes us into people that we wouldn't otherwise be. And I think that's probably also why Jesus, more than anything else, more than anything else in the Bible, the authors of the Bible, they put the words, fear not, on the lips of those prophets, on the lips of Jesus. Because God wants to remind us 
that it's in the meantime that we need not fear because we always will have a God who walks with us. So I know you're sitting at home and you're probably going, okay, that's all great, Pastor. So what do we do? What do we do in the meantime while we wait for this whole thing to be over? I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I want to wonder with you. What if in the meantime, as we wait for COVID to subside, what if in the meantime we were all really careful about about what we consumed on social media and what we passed on to others on social media? Or if you're not on social media, what if we were all really careful uh, about who we listened to and the gossip we passed on to others? And, And what if from time to time we put our phones down, we put away social media, we quit listening to all the voices and we did something for the sake of our community? You see, I think one of the ways we can love our neighbor uh, as ourselves these days is to actually go purchase takeout from a local restaurant. Maybe that sounds silly, but here's what you and I know, that it's restaurants, our local restaurants, that have been hit harder by all of this than any others because of the restrictions uh, and this crazy virus. So what if rather than spending hours consuming social media, you were to go go order takeout and don't just get it for you, get it for your neighbor as well and help us be neighbors to those who own our restaurants in town. What do we do in the meantime? Well, maybe you could do something like this. After watching all the events that have unfolded in Minneapolis, all that's happened around the death of George Floyd, maybe you could sit down with a neighbor Maybe you could sit down with your spouse. Man, it would be great if you could sit down with your kids and talk about those events. And maybe you'd be honest enough to talk about how it was that your parents and your grandparents talked about race. The the sort of ways that they referred to African Americans. And that just maybe you could be a part of teaching the next generation a different way. What do we do in the meantime? Well, maybe in the meantime, we could also all tend to our elderly. Get this, here's the statistic. 78% of the people who have contracted COVID are under the age of 60. But get this, 94% of the people who have died are over the age of 60. What could we do in the meantime? Well, we could be overly cautious and careful in tending to those who are most vulnerable in our community. We could wear masks, not because it puts us at a greater safety, but because it makes those those that are more vulnerable, those who are over the age of 60 in our community, well, it protects them. And maybe we can social distance, not, not so much for ourselves, but for the ways that it protects those that are most vulnerable in our community. Folks, I don't know what you're going to do in the meantime, but here's what I do know. When those disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, when is this all going to be over? When is the waiting going to come to an end? Jesus ignored their question. He didn't address it because Jesus knew that we were going to find ourselves in moments like this where we find ourselves waiting. And instead of asking, answering the question when, Jesus answers the question how. How do we be community? How do we love our neighbor during these hard times where it's easy, easy to only see all the control we've lost and let fear grab hold? Folks, I believe with all my heart that that's why the Bible says 365 times, fear not or do not be afraid. Because you and I, we need to hear each and every day that we have a God who looks at you and me and says, I'm with you. You need not be afraid. Folks, here's what I know. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this with God and we're going to get through this with each other. Folks, have a great day. hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight.
pain of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of your sail? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father. and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and train them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling calling oh come to the old And I will put my trust 
like you to join me in a time of prayer. If you have the opportunity to be worshiping with some other people, will you just do me a favor? Will you just draw them close at this time and join me in a time of prayer for our world and for our community? Gracious God, we grow weary from this virus and we boldly ask for a cure. As we struggle with fears and anxieties, with focus and finding our way forward, assure us of your presence. We give thanks that even in the face of the unknown, we are completely known by you. Thank you for all the people that are working to preserve and renew life, to work and preserve physical health and mental health, protect and give them strength for the days ahead. Thank you for those who make us feel connected and cared for and shield and bless our most vulnerable and the unemployed and the underemployed. Lord, we ask you to dismantle sin that exists deep in our hearts. Break us down so that we can see all people the way that you see them as your beloved children. Break down racial fears and political divides and bring us unity, justice, and understanding. Lord God, provide wisdom to leaders as they have to make difficult decisions. Provide supplies, vaccines, and safe places for treatment. Be with all the sick and suffering and bring healing. And for those who are grieving, bring comfort. Help us to trust you and your love for all. Renew us, restore us, give us your peace and the inspiration to spread your healing love to our community and to the world. In your son's name, amen. And if you'll join me in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, before you rush off to go to Luther Crest to get your mini donuts and to wave to us, we're going to close our worship with a time of offering. Friends, the world needs the church now more than ever, and we are so lucky here at Calvary to be able to support our ministry partners like Luther Crest, The Shelf at the High School, United Way, and so many others. And so because of your generosity, we're able to continue to do that. So at this time, I'd like to invite you to give a gift. There are four ways that you can do this. The first is to go on our website, www.calvaryalex.org, and click on the Give button. The second is that you can text 77977, text Calvary Alex, and you'll be given some prompts that you, will lead you to be able to give. The third is you can write a check and just mail it in to the church. And the fourth, just give the church a call. The number is on your screen and we will help you figure it out. Friends, thank you so much for your generosity. And in this way, we're able to continue to spread the good news of Jesus throughout the whole world. How exciting is that? We'll see you at Luthercrest. Have a great day.